Hey everybody, this is Craig from VTEX, and if you work in a data center or do something with network planning, then this is a good episode to watch. Today we're going to talk about upgrades, specifically 400 gig in our racks and servers. So what do we do when we want to move to a higher speed? So there's only a couple things that are certain in life, right? We got death, taxes, and optics are going to get faster and faster. So what are some of our options if we have a 100 gig solution and we need to go to 400 gig? So what we can do is we can just do a massive changeover, right? Pull all of the 100 gig stuff out, put in 400 gig. Well, this is not gonna really work. If you're a 400 gig switch company, they probably want you to do this because they have this one size fit all solution. And if you're a fan of cheeseburgers, you know, you want a cheeseburger, he wants a cheeseburger, 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 but that doesn't really work in this area. So what we want to do is we want to implement some type of reuse of our 100 gig that we already had in our data center. So what are some of the options that we have? So we can use a traditional MUX, DMUX. We have to bring in other equipment to do that, but that's not really optimal. So what are some of our other things that we can try out? So what we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about how we can fully utilize our 400 gig port and save some money while we do it. So here's an example of a 400 gig DR4 and we're gonna pair this with either a single Lambda DR1 or FR1. So we're gonna be able to use all of existing connections right that we have and we're going to only upgrade this one area so what's the benefit of doing this first one is flexibility right we can upgrade when we want to upgrade on our own time schedule we don't have to worry about major downtimes because we're swapping everything out in our racks for 400 gig solution okay it's also super cost effective right if you want to spend lots of money, you can go ahead and just buy 400 gig everything and spend the time to swap it all out. But if you're looking for something that's more of a cost effective solution, you may want to consider breakouts, right? So, but what are some kind of gotchas that you got to consider? So some things just to remember is that uh, these lanes are going to be all asynchronous, right? So they're going to be independent from each other. One lane going down doesn't mean that the other ones are going to go down. So we have to consider that in our solution. Uh, we also have to remember that we have to code these correctly. We have to have breakout support in them. And we have to have with that our compliance codes that are properly supporting a breakout solution. And one of the most important things to remember is we really gotta have feck off when we do this, okay? So right here, we're just kind of showing what are some of the codes that are needed in our EEPROM coding, depending if we're using a DR1, FR1, or LR1 solution, right? And uh, so you may ask, oh, does this only work in 100 and a 400 gig solution? Why are they the only ones invited to the dance? And they're not. So we have solutions here at VTEX where we can do 200 gig, 100 gig, 25, 40, 10 gig. They all get into the mix. So as we move into the future, everyone knows 400 gig is going to go away. So we're going to have this same problem again when 800 gig comes out. So what do you guys think about some of the solutions and some of the breakout applications that are going to emerge as we move to 800? Reply in the comments, let us know some of your thoughts. Uh, and if you um, wanna learn about your solutions, you wanna talk through them, give us a call, drop us an email here in our New Jersey office. We're more than willing to help and ready to uh, support you. So that's it for now. Until next time, I'll see you then.